Hi, I'm Bonnie Lynn Linke, an independent Stamping Up demonstrator, and welcome to my studio, Stamping with Bonnie Lynn. Today, I am going to show you how to make this card right here. It is a creative fold. I believe some people may call it an easel card, but I'm not quite sure because I'm lousy at remembering names. So I'm just calling them creative folds from now on. And the way it works is that it just comes out like so. You can see that and open it up and there's your inside. So pretty and so much fun to make. And I did use a couple different stamp sets for this one. I used the Christmas lights so that I could emboss the tree. I used the peaceful deer, the little deer here. Uh, my saying for the inside came from the brightest glow. These two are part of a suite together, and this is from last year, but it is still being offered for sale in the annual catalog this year. These two are from the July to December mini catalog. And then for my Merry Christmas, I wanted a long one that went out like so. And the one that I found that I like the best is from a retired set. It is the Evergreen Elegance. And I believe that is, yes, from last year's um, mini catalog, Christmas catalog. So, okay, that's what I did. So let's get started on making this card. I'm excited to be making it. Bring my, I've already cut my paper, my card base is the cherry cobbler it is four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half and we're just gonna fold that over like so burnish it with the bone folder and then the next layer is my basic black and this one is four inches by ten and a half. So I scored at two and five eighths inches. And then, um, yeah, and then for right here, I scored at five and a quarter. Five and a quarter is half of what ten and a half is. So that's how I came up with that. And then I just took whatever the half way mark was here, and that was two and five eighths. So what we're going to do is now when I scored it because of the way it bends I wanted the mountain on the outside so I scored it this way I turned it over and then I scored it from the other side and that way I got my mountains where I wanted them to be because if the mountains are on the inside it, of the fold right here it gives a stronger um, piece of paper where it's less likely to rip and you know, Stampin' Up! has such wonderful paper. The color shows all the way through and everything that you just can't go wrong with it. So center your black piece on your card base. And then I use tear and tape. I take off the top piece, press it down, take off the side, and then take off the bottom and the other side. And put it in place. So as you can see what we're doing is we're just getting the card part all put together and then we'll work on the other items. So this is the designer series paper and it is the lights aglow designer series paper. At least I believe that's the name. And I cut it at um I think what dimensions did I use? Oh boy, I'm drawing a blank. It is on my webpage, stampingwithbonnylynn.com. And you can print out my directions. I make it so you can print them out. And you can download them too to save them to your computer. So it's always right there. And I, I do put the pictures of the inside on there and, and anything you may need. And the video link is always on there too. And if you save the directions to your um, computer, because I try to remember to put the video link in the directions so that um, you can just have access to the video 
right from the directions just if it's if you save it on the computer it will come up as a link that is so neat that um, it's not a stamping up website that I do that on it's a different website and it is so neat the way that works the technology is really something out there okay so we're putting this piece of cherry cobbler paper on the um, front fold out of the black paper I left this one just black because it is hidden but if you feel like it needs to be covered then um, there's some great paper in this set of designer series paper that you could put on it even the back side of this one it's like boco dots I believe is what you call them broco and that would look real pretty and I tried to line up this piece with this didn't need to because once you take it out of the card and have it set up you never know if, notice it my um, surface is very slippery so cards don't stand on it um, when it's a tint card very well it's a very smooth slippery one okay so now what we need to do is we need to do our dare I have my paper here and I just want to show you how I colored it real quick. If you're not, I used alcohol inks, um, stamping blends. And I don't have them all because I have almost a full set of Copics. So I still have not purchased all the stamping blends. I need to work on that a little bit better. I would suggest um, the light suede and the crumb cake. Now this is Memento Black ink I'm using, a piece of very vanilla paper, and I chose it instead of um, the white because it is just a little bit not as shiny, but I decided to do something different than what I did right there, and I'll show you that. But Memento ink will not um, smear when you color it, so that's why we use that. And here we go. So I took the light pale papaya and I did the inside of the ears. Now, if I had crumb cake, I wouldn't use the dark suede at all, but I don't. And so I want to just show you what you do when you don't have things. Okay, now this is where the leg meets the body. So I put a little bit of the dark suede there and I also put it on these behind parts where parts meet up just to act kind of like a shadow and I did it at the top of the legs right here too very lightly okay and then I took the light soft suede and I put a line under his neck or her neck And went up so far only to the neck and then I just took this and I colored in about three quarters of it I didn't color in all the way at the top I probably should have put a little bit of the dark suede in right and I can go back and do that so you can see where the legs are different and that one is underneath so darken it a little bit just try to stay in your line so okay now what I did is I have Copics and I took my E31 and I did the face but if you don't have Copics and you don't have crumb cakes what do you want to do and I also went over the rest of this to help blend it I always go over my complete picture with my light and so if you what do you do what you do is you take this here is a zero pin in Copics it's the same as the blender pin in um, your stamping blends so I took that and I took my light soft suede took the cap off the big end 
and I rub it against hair and I get some ink on it. You can see the ink and it takes a little bit and you got to be patient. It's a little bit slower, but I just keep taking some ink from it and adding it. Now I've been doing this for on some others and so it just um And that way, it's an exactly, the E31 was probably a bad choice because it doesn't um, blend real good. Okay, and you'll notice because I'm using my blender pen, um, you're seeing it spread. I got too close to the line, so it did go out a little bit, but that's okay. And if I was to take this over, my dear, it would... Um, lighten that all up too and blend it in because it is just straight alcohol. So. And then make sure you clean off your blender pen real good afterwards. I'll get that in a little bit. Okay. And then you have to fussy cut it out. Okay, and I saw where that went over. Don't worry about it. You can try and push it in with your blender pen if you want to, but there's no need to. I don't like to fussy cut. I had already done one and cut it out with um, my brother's cutting machine. Okay, because this I'm using black on my card base and everything. If you have the light smoky slate, it should be somewhat close to the color I'm using because I didn't want this to be real white. I'm just coloring it in like so. I do not color on paper underneath this because paper will absorb the ink and it won't blend. I do have, and I should have probably got it, brought it up here. I do have a mat that I color on like so. And then when I'm done, because that is alcohol ink, I just take an alcohol wipe and I clean whatever ink I got on my work surface off. I do not use the alcohol wipes on the blender pens or my Copics because it is a little bit different than the liquid that they put in to make your alcohol, bl your Stampin' Blends. So you do not want to wipe your, um, they call these nibs. You do not want to wipe them with an alcohol wipe. You can wipe like the edge right there. And um, you can wipe the inside right here. But just be, just be careful because you don't want to get it on there. And I am going to work at getting some more stamping blends. I know that would be nice for you guys. And um, you can use the same method with maybe your polished pink if you want pink inside the ears and do, we call it a kissing, where you kiss the color and put it on there with your blender pen. So that's just a little bit about um, Stampin' Blends, how to color. And most of, and this was done with the Stampin' Blends, the way, using the method I showed you. Okay, so I'll move this out of the way now. Now we need to do our tree. And I've already stamped and heat embossed the saying, but I wanted to do the tree for you because this is foil that I am stamping on. And um, hold on a second. I forgot to put my ear pots in. So. Okay, this may sound a little bit different now. I apologize that I forgot to do it sooner. But because um, this is foil, it's a little bit different to stamp on, heat emboss on, than what it is for your paper because foil will kind of melt. <laughs> There's no kind of about it. So you want to be real careful and pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure you use your embossing buddy on it. I have not gotten the um, embossing edition setup tray yet. 
I do plan on ordering it on October 4th. It is free shipping that day. So um, it's a good time to order items. It's also the beginning of a new quarter for Stampin' Up! So we have our minimum to meet, which is not a problem. Um, but for people that are hobby demonstrators, it works out perfect for them because they can get the free shipping. And if you're interested in becoming a demonstrator, Stamping Up! is having a special if you join between October 4th and 31st, you get $155 worth of merchandise of your choice for just $99. Plus, they give you catalogs also. Um, so if you would like to be a demonstrator, I would love to have you on my team. We are the Starlight Crafters. And it would be wonderful to have you join me. All right, so... I use the embossing buddy on here. I'm using my Stamparatus because then it won't slide because this is foil. It is a little bit more slippery and I'm not always real steady. Okay, so I ink up my stamp real good because I don't want to go back a second time if I don't have to being on the foil. It is a little bit different than using regular cardstock. Not much, but you just need to pay more attention. Okay. You would think I don't pay attention to what I'm doing when I'm doing it on paper. Huh, maybe that's true. All right, so press down, get it on there. Okay, look at this. Now I take this off because I don't want to get the Versa mark all over everything. Just set it up there and move it onto the floor. That way I can probably step in it in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. I don't have the embossing um, edition yet, I told you, but I do have my little plastic containers with the trays. And you see Stampin' Up! Gold is the color that's in here. And I teach classes, and I find this is a wonderful way to do it. Where is my paintbrush? Here it is. Okay, now I want to go in one more time from this way. I like covering my image two times. I don't know why. I think in my mind that it gives me a better coverage. I don't want the mess of that going all over me. Okay, and then I just take my brush and brush away from the side, which we're cutting this out, so it's not too important. All right, I put my lid back on because I do not want that all over me. And I had a clothespin out here a few minutes ago to hold this, but <laughs> I don't know what I did with it. I can't believe how easily I misplace things that I'm using. Do any of you have that problem? Okay, I'm going to heat up my um, heat gun. And the thing with doing the embossing on foil, you just want to make sure as soon as it melts, you move the heat on so you don't melt the foil. So I'm just heating up my emboss embossing gun tool a little bit. Okay, and I'll try to hold this so you can see it, but I gotta be able to see it too. And you're gonna notice that the foil's gonna bend. And until it, okay, now it's starting to melt. And I just, Take a look at it. Make sure it's all melted. Actually, this one didn't bend like it normally does. It normally bends in a fold. So, okay. This looks good. 
And then I would take my dies. I, if I'm able to, I keep them right in with my stamps, the Twinkling Lights dies. And I would take this. And now I tape mine in place. My plates are a little bit bent. I need to heat them up in my oven and get them back to being flat again. I'll probably do that tonight. But I tape them on to hold it, a little piece of washi tape or purple tape on the side there just to hold it in place and run it through my cut and emboss machine. But I've already done one right there. So there we go. And for my... Um, saying I did it on Evening Evergreen cardstock and I used the seasonal labels which are also in the annual catalog I believe they're in the end yes the annual catalog and um, because they're a carryover from last year and I use this one right here these labels are great for any time of year um, I highly recommend them if you don't have them yet. They're a really wonderful. Okay, so now I bring my card base. And okay, I'm going to figure out where my tree's going to go. So I'm going to, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, so I want it to go about right there. So one, two. So two of those, just measuring it so I know where to put my tape. And then I'll get the tape wrong anyhow. Okay, it doesn't need a lot of tape. I just put one at about the top of where I think I want it and then down at the bottom. If you don't have a deer or an animal to put on it, um, make some presents and put them on there because that would look um, pretty. Just trying to get it straight. There we go. And then put three dimensionals on the back here. And I did that to cover the bottom, but I want to make sure I get it centered. I want as much as the tree to show as I can. I'll get that up here. Okay. And then take your deer. And I use two dimensionals on this guy. One right back there, and did I have room for one? I'm gonna use a mini. There we go. And I set him so that it just looks like his legs are resting on my saying. And then for the inside, let's see, color. I used Evening Evergreen. So let me grab that. I had put it away. And I'll grab a block here. Brightest glow, may the peace of the season light your world and may your new year be the brightest. I like that. And that one is right here. We'll see how straight I can get it. Okay, and try not to put my head in here. There we go. But I did do my hair today, so it wouldn't be all that bad if I didn't. <laughs> I 
if I did get my head in. Okay, and let that dry for a moment while we um, put this on. All we need is a piece of tape. This is four inches by five eighths, and it is from the same set of designer series paper. It matches what's on the background of our card right there. Okay, just to show you that I do know how to use glue. I am going to use glue. The green stuff. Okay. I keep it upside down in a container. And also, I want to take my scissors and cut where it overlaps. Right there. Okay, and I'm going to try to do this without getting glue all over me. You guys can laugh at me at any, at any time. <laughs> I laugh at myself all the time. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And we need some gems. And let's see, I forgot to get these out. These is the brush brass metallics. I need to order these too. I need them for a class the week after this week. I don't live far from Utah. Shipping is only, it only takes a day. So I live in Idaho. So it doesn't take too long to get here. So they'll be here in plenty of time for my class. If not, the ladies know I have something else that will work good. We're making this card in the class. They don't know that yet. I hadn't posted what cards we're making yet. They just trust me. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put some of these little gold, red and green adhesive back pearls on the card. Let's see, where should we put the other one? Let's put it on this side. I like it right there. And I put them right inside the stars. There we go. So these were the brush metallic gold. So what do you like better? Do you like having the paper natural left around the deer? Or do you like it with the gray on it? Hmm, I don't know. And yes, you see I did the face a little bit darker. So if you have the crumb cake, much better look. Also, I used a little bit of pink in there instead of the light apricot, but that works too. It just shows that it's the inside of the skin, which is always lighter. Okay, and then for the envelope, um, I buy my envelopes, not from Stampin' Up! And so my ivory has a pointed piece, and the piece of paper I had would not fit all the way down so I ended up using a white envelope. But because we all get our envelopes from different sources, make sure you measure across at the widest point and the width right here and add a piece of designer series paper to it. And you know, you could also put, oh, I already got it dirty. You could um, also stamp the dare right there and color it in. But if you do color it in, put a piece of scratch paper. This isn't going to fit. I'll just show you with this one right here. Put a piece of scratch paper in your envelope to put behind when you're coloring it so the ink doesn't go through to the other side here. All right. Thank you for joining me today. As I said, October 4th is free shipping, so make sure you get your order placed 
for that. And um, I would love to be your Stamping Up demonstrator. My website is Bonnie Link, Stamping with Bonnie Lynn dot com. Oh, that's bad. Bon Stamping with Bonnie Lynn dot com. And also, you'll find a link there on the right hand side of the page, midway down, to shop in my online store. You'll find my host code. Use that so you can earn um, rewards points and get a $25 gift certificate after getting 10 $25 points. And I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this card as much as I did making it and have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot. Bye.